Whether you have just purchased your first Swiss machine or you already have a fleet of Swiss machines in your shop, Gibscam has the option that you need. Our Gibscam MTM option augments your current Gibscam skill set to the unique needs of the Swiss machine. Think of it as Super Multitask Machining or MTM. Our all-in-one easy to learn and use interface lets you program any type of chip making machine from simple mill to complex MTM machines. The Swiss machine represents done-in-one machining without having to relocate the part to another cell. Simple integrated milling and turning means you only need a single interface for all of your CNC programming needs. The swinging B axis allows for 5 axis positioning and 5 axis simultaneous milling. Let's stop and take a look at the machine configuration. First we'll have a look at the tool groups. This Swiss machine, a Citizen L220 Mark 12, has eight separate tool groups, including the gangs groups here on the top slide, the swinging B axis, the rear static tool groups, which can be either live or static, and over here on the subspindle, we have other tool stations, again, that can be live or static. By opening the show position tool, we can demonstrate how the axes on the machine work. The B axis is the swinging axis and can swing to mill on both the main and the sub spindle. The X1 axis performs the diameter work on the upper slide, whether that's milling or turning. The X102 axis is on the sub spindle. The sub spindle has an X axis. The subspindle also has a y-axis, and the subspindle has a z-axis, while the main spindle and the main tools have a y-axis to access the different tool positions, and yes, this is a cutoff part detector. And then lastly, we have the z101 axis, which is your sliding headstock. Now back to the part for just a moment while we talk about a few more bullet points of Swiss machining inside of Gibbscam. Multi-flow programming with collision detection and reporting. If you turn on collision checking and then set a collision checking parameter, Gibbscam will tell you if you have accidentally crashed one component of the machine into another component of the machine. We'll grab the Z102 axis and bring it all the way forward and you can immediately see where the collisions are and it will allow you to go in and fix the problems where they exist. Now that we've had a look at the machine setup and some of the machining operations, let's stop just for a moment and take a look, an in-depth look at the synchronization control. The sync control is something that is unique to Gibbs Cam and allows us to synchronize the flows of our machine. This is a Citizen L220 Mark 12 and is a two flow machine. Front flow, back flow, or flow one and flow two. If you had a three turret machine, you would see flow three. If you had a four turret machine, you would see flow three and flow four. Now let's look at the icons inside of the sync control and see what we have. Each of these icons represents an operation. The operation numbers correspond with the operations here on the right hand side of the screen and they show their position in the program. Now you'll also see that we have operation syncs and system syncs. These synchronizations add weight codes or other synchronization items to the program. And as you can see here, we have a red line running from here to here, which means that we have a sync deadlock. This is something that's not allowed in a Swiss machine to synchronize across machine modes. We're going to remove that simply by clicking on the end of op 11 and the beginning of op 18 and clicking remove sync. 
we have now removed that system deadlock and you'll see that the program error checker works in conjunction with the sync control to make sure that you have your machine under control. The light blue syncs are system syncs and let's create another synchronization here, a user sync between the end of Op 11 and the beginning of Op 13. We simply select the end and the beginning and select Operation Sync. These operations are now synchronized. Let's now take a look at another aspect of these tiles. We are currently in Uniform View. Let's leave Uniform View and have a look at the operation tiles now. Notice that they are different lengths and that there's a timeline here at the bottom. This timeline shows where each operation starts and each operation ends. And this includes cutting operations and non-cutting operations. You can scan through the timeline to see where each operation falls in the timeline of your program. Longer ops are longer time. Shorter ops are shorter time. Let's go back and look at uniform view for just a moment again. And let's look at operation sync and stroke sync. If we had two tools that are working on the same diameter, we can set a stroke synchronization as well to match the roughing strokes inside of this operation. The sync manager is a graphical user interface that is unique to GibbsCam and helps you quickly organize the flows of your program to avoid sync deadlocks and also to avoid collisions across your machine components. The Swiss machine has many tools to help you efficiently and quickly program this Swiss machine. Let's have a look at some tool paths here in Swiss. Do they differ from your standard turning machines? No, they do not. Let's open the view control and go to the main spindle. And yes, on the Citizen, the main spindle is on the right-hand side. Here we have a utility op. Utility ops are very unique to Gibbs Cam, and they allow you to control the non-cutting portions of your program. Here we are parking the Z1 axis 200 thousandths away from the tool while we reposition the machine at the program start. Another utility op is our machine mode. In Swiss machines, the machines have more than one mode handled by G-codes. G600, free pattern. Single machining, IDOD simultaneous. C-axis, spindle one, C-axis or spindle two. Front and back parallel machining, front and back simultaneous machining. Let's see how to create and execute a utility op. Here we have a utility op for an unload spindle. Let's throw it in the trash can and show how easy it is to add. We simply double click in the process list and select utility op VMM and this is a no tool op. Or is it a no tool op? I think we need the parting tool here. Now that we have the parting tool, let's unload the spindle to the parts catcher, Z position one inch, and time for unload is going to be five seconds. Click here and do it. Now that we have added this spindle unload, let's go back and look at the sync control for just a minute. And the sync control can also tell us the exact cycle time of the part by clicking the stopwatch and it will tell you the cycle time of the complete part including all of your utility ops. Let's go back and have a look at the part again in machine sim while we catch a couple of more bullets on this unique Swiss machine. Here we have some tool pathing and you can see on the Swiss machine the part moves in and out of a guide bushing. This means that the tools are very close 
to the front of the spindle as well as the part supporting the spindle at all times. Let's go look at a toolpath operation and look at facing off the front of the part. Right clicking home view will show us the sub spindle on the right hand side. In GibbsCam, we use the machining markers to set the start point and end point of this toolpath. This is a facing toolpath. We want to face the front edge of the part. Pull the start marker above the stock, pull the black end marker below the stock, and select single feature cut and do it. And you can see we now have a toolpath. Other toolpaths like this one allow us to add a radius here on the back side of this toolpath so that there's not a burr left on the part to scratch up the guide bushing or to lock up the guide bushing. This is a simple contour to finish the front face and OD and to deburr the OD. We set forward, wrap it in, our radius, speed, feed, and of course our corner brake which is automatic. We will position the machining markers at the start point and we will position the machining markers at the end point, set the machining direction and click do it and you now see that we have a toolpath that is fully deburred again so we don't scratch up the guide bushing. Drilling is equally as simple inside of Gibbs Cam, but here in Gibbs Cam we are going to use automated drilling from the hole manager. The hole manager has been covered in an earlier Gibbs Cam tech tip. This machine and all of your Swiss machines can easily be programmed inside of Gibbs Cam. If you'd like any more info, please contact Camco. We are happy to help.